Alrighty folks, this is Alan recording another comprehensive Magic the Gathering Arena draft video. It's been a long time and I haven't uploaded too much content. Um, yeah, unfortunately a little bit busy right now searching for uh, work after the past couple of days. But yeah, um, anyways, yeah, with um, Guilds of Ravnica about to leave in less than a day, I think we're going to fire off some guilds. Although not the most balanced sets, I still need a little bit more content on my channel. There's still some archetypes I haven't thoroughly explored. Most of have been drafting um, Boros and Demir in this set, which, I mean, they're obviously the best two um, guilds um, in this set. But there's definitely a lot more um, interesting archetypes. The aggro and control is a dex, uh, the Selesnia um, and Golgari decks, and even sometimes the Abzan colors, if you want to kind of, um, if you open up like a Dawn of Hope, and you want to play some sort of control deck in the Wedge color combination. But anyways, yeah, I'm about to leave in less than a day, and Call Time will begin in, um, approximately, I think, two weeks. Um, so that being said, um, I think we, I mean, actually, 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 it's three weeks. Today is January the 7th, so it's going to... So, you know, seven days, seven times three is 21. So, um, yeah, it's going to be January the 28th. Um, I guess there's, all, there's also pre-releases um, before the 28th. Um, actually, no, I think the pre-releases are on the 28th. But not sure. But anyways, um, yeah, Kaldheim should be coming in soon. So let's fire off some Guilds of Ravnica. And it's going to be interesting to see what set they have uh, via Premier Draft um, after... Guilds of Ravnica is finished, but yeah, this is the first time um, this has ever been premiered, since most of the time when we were first started Magic the Gathering, um, this was one of the first sets along with, of course, at 2019 and Dominaria, but um, it wasn't featured in Premiere. Premiere didn't arrive un until um, Ikoria, so this is pretty fun. Um, and, you know, I've drafted a couple of uh, um, drafts already, and I've mostly been doing fine getting up to three, four wins, but haven't gotten my seven yet, so hopefully this time we can uh, pull it off. And pack one, pick one, the premier draft at Guilds of Ravnica. What do you have to find pleasure of opening today? Alright, that's taking a while to load. A thousand Year Storm, not the rare you would like to open. However, um, I do like the Lead Guild Mage a lot. Um, it can maybe set us up for a nice um, is it control deck. Um, the Smelt Ward Minotaur is more like a blue-red card in Is It, except for the more aggressive game plan, so it's kind of like opposite to the Lead Guild Mage, but it's mostly going to be played in blue-red, even though it's only one single red. Um, World Soul Colossus is pretty good. That's a nice payoff for Celesnia, but green is the weakest. The two green is the weakest color in this set, so you kind of want to not lean towards it and then looking at the commons i do like direct current and woljack bodyguard as the best commons probably still prefer woljack bodyguard over direct current given how powerful um boros is so if we want to stay flexible we could just take the woljack bodyguard maybe draft um boros aggro or is it aggro but um i think in terms of raw power level um and um just the fact that uh um uh, I haven't drafted a blue-red control deck yet. I think I'm going to take the lead guild mage and lead towards an is it control deck. And yeah, why not um, pick up the best card in this pack that can keep us flexible as well. Chemistor's Insight is great. Uh, lots of bad green rares in this set, including Vivid Revival. There's just not too many ways to um, put to self-mill this set outside of a Glow Spore Shaman. Um, so I'm not a big fan of Golgari in general. Um, although there is a guild mage, which is pretty good. Probably the weakest of the guild mages. Um, Ledev Champion is quite good as well. So two green, uh, gold, um, colored uncommons, but um, we're being passed a chemistry chemister's insight uh, following up a lead guild mage which is perfect since the lead guild mage wants to be played in is a control deck where it can keep up its activated abilities so the more instant speed counter spells we can play along with this and card draw spells the better so happy taking the lead guild mage and in this pack there's also luminous bonds which is quite excellent so had we taken the woljack bodyguard we'd probably be looking at luminous bonds or chemister's insight but yeah, Chemistry's Insight is just probably better, since uh, it's a nice 2-for-1, and you can uh, flashback it later, and it's um, almost can be a 2-for-1, since you can just discard a land late in the game, so don't hate it here. So we're going to draft an Is It Control deck, and I think I'm going to take Direct Current over Beam Splitter Mage. You can definitely draft a nice, aggressive Is It deck with Beam Splitter Mage, especially if you have Sure Strikes to back it up, and um, if you're lucky enough to open up a Quasi-Duplicate, this can be quite powerful, even with cards like Maximize Velocity, um... 
it's going to be kind of strong the one that gives flying. But I think it's a direct current given that um, we want to be in a much more controlling deck. So the more removal the better and we're not really going to be an aggressive game plan since we do want to keep up the League Guild Mage's activated ability. So yeah, um, is it control does seem kind of open. Another terrible rare we opened, so we opened up a terrible rare and then we're past two totally completely bad rares. So it is a sign that the person to my right knows how to draft. So we'll take a direct current. It's a good sign that red is open, especially is it. So happy seeing this. And that's a pretty late um, true fire ca captain that I think I have to take here. I mean, I wouldn't mind Unexplained Disappearance and Whisper Agent in our Is It Control deck, but being past this um, pick 4 is definitely a sign that we might have to switch to Boros is, if Blue is cut off. Uh, this card is just really powerful, it's kind of like a Mythic Uncommon, especially since it can deal damage um, whenever it is dealt damage, so it's difficult to block and attack into. And also Mentors, at 4 power it can pretty much mentor onto anything. Um, so definitely a powerful mythic uncommon in my opinion. Um, so yeah, we could definitely still be in Boros. So we maybe me we missed out on the Wojek bodyguard and the Luminous Bonds, but that's okay. Um, sometimes um, you don't know what you're past and you just have to um, uh, wing it, so to speak. But um, yeah, if True Fire Captain wasn't in his pack, probably take the Whisper Agent since it plays well for our instant speed spells. But gotta take the uh, True Fire Captain. It's really this late. Um, but now I'm being passed a Beacon Bolt and a Wooljack Bodyguard. So this is also a sign that the Is It Control deck is open. And I, th I think this is perfect with our first three picks. Whereas if I pivot into Boros, which is definitely not unrealistic and definitely a decent strategy if um, you were past a True Fire Captain or a very strong Boros card. But um, yeah, given that this is being passed to us and this is just a great Is It card and we started out as a controlling Is It deck with a League Guild Mage, I think um, the majority oftentimes wins, so we just want to take a Beacon Bolt. Otherwise, I wouldn't mind a Wojek Bodyguard. It's a nice um, car creature mentor on to do with onto with um, True Fire Captain and also Mentors onto pretty much any 2 or 1 drop in the set. So yeah, but we're going to take the Beacon Bolt and yeah, draft the Controlling Is It deck and Hypothesis is perfect. I mean, there's a lot of great cards in this pack for the Blue-Red is control deck, unexplained disappearance, pretty late, whisper agent, and hypothesis. And there's also Wojek bodyguard, but hypothesis is great, especially with a lot of our jumpstart cards that we can discard into the graveyard for value. And then we can always just cast the jumpstart cards again by discarding land or the card we don't like. It's also instant speed, so it functions as a nice two for one and a removal spell, so it's great. I wouldn't mind a whisper agent too, but it's usually a more demir focused card. It does have synergy because it can discard jumpstart cards, but. Double Blue is not the easiest to cast, um, and Unexplained Disappearance I also wouldn't mind. I would still take Whisper Agent over Unexplained Disappearance, but the Hypothesis is too good, and it also allows us to cut off Is It since it's multicolored, so I do like this, and Goblin Electromancer is perfect, so I'm happy that we start out with a League Guild Mage into Chemister's Insight, and the person to my right isn't drafting Is It because now we're getting all the payoffs, and then yeah, it seems like a lot of people on my right isn't drafting Is It, so I think we're going to have a really strong deck at the end of this, and this should be a pretty fun draft video, so yeah, this card is great, especially in the control deck, since I'm going to be playing lots of expensive instances and sorceries, and yeah, given that we're, again, a much more controlling deck, I think I just take the Goblin on second Goblin Electromancer, and then hopefully the the person to my right maybe ends up drafting Boros since I passed him like three Wojek bodyguards already. Did take a true fire captain away from him, but um, it's it was still early. So um, it's a little bit of a nice hate draft, so to speak, but definitely going to take the second one. Going to play well with our, of our instances and sorceries. Just a great two drop for the is it deck. It can be great in aggro or control. And we'll take another direct current because, again, we just want to maximize on removal for the most part to leverage our beacon bolts. We're not looking to attack on the ground. Our win conditions are mostly going to rely on uh, late game flyers, I, I say. Um, and uh, we're going to mostly try to control the game by dealing with the opponent's threats and uh, also leveraging card advantage from chemisters, hypothesis, or and legal mage. So a second direct current is perfect, but um, definitely going to prioritize the other one much less, and these cards I don't really care about. Maybe take a Gateway Plaza in case we're splashing, um, but I don't really like to splash. And um, yeah, this is a decent hate draft. Don't want to pass too many insane Boros cards if I was in a real-life pod. The Skyland Scout is a good two-drop in the Boros deck, so I'm going to take it here. And um, yeah, none of these matter. And uh, maybe we end up playing a Sure Strike if we're aggressive enough, but also cuts off Boros a bit, so... And Boros is the best archetype, arguably, in the set. I think Demir is more well-rounded, but Boros 
generally speaking, can win more games since um, there's just a lot of support for it at common and lots of powerful, and uh, they can just end games very quickly if um, you don't get your two drops right away, and it's not difficult to mentor onto in this set. But yeah, for sure, this is a really good start to a draft, um, and yeah. Um, pretty happy we um, picked our first two picks and we still uh, stayed on in on our guild. Otherwise, I think I would have pivoted into Boros. And uh, yeah, we could have had like um, a couple um, Voljack Bodyguards already and Skyland Scout, which is definitely still a possible 7-win deck. But uh, yeah, we'll keep going and see what we open. I do like Night Veil Sprite a lot. I don't think we're a Goblin Banneret deck. Uh, again, I don't think we're that aggressive, and we're not looking to attack on the ground. Whereas Night Veil's Sprite is, just helps us surveil, put our Jumpstart cards into the graveyard. And uh, yeah, it's just a 1-2 flyer, which can ship in for early damage, so seems really good. Alternatively, the Radical Idea I will also wouldn't mind um, as a nice Jumpstart card. And hopefully we can wheel one later, but I'm not going to take it over Night Veil's Sprite. This card is just a lot better. Um, pack one, pick one. It would be... It'd be Pretty interesting between these two, actually between these three. This is great in Boros, Aggro. This is great in Demir, and is it? And this is just a powerful uh, sweeper. Um, I'd probably still take Ritual of Soot and maybe set some sort of Black, Demir, or Golgari control deck. Since this card is quite powerful and can definitely be backbreaking. But um, these two cards are also very excellent. So it'd be a pretty hard pack to know what to grab. But I'll take a Night Veil Sprite here. Just great. And do I just take a second one? There's a Leapfrog, there's also, I guess, Rampaging Monuments, which I don't mind at 4. Or do I just play double Night Veil Sprites, and then hopefully we can maybe add some Surveil Synergies into our deck. It's more of a Demir thing to add Surveil Synergies, so I'm not sure. Maybe I just take the Rampaging Monument now, just to have a bit of a 4 drop that can maybe grow over time. Um, because we just took a Night Veil Sprite already, and uh, our 2s are still looking good, whereas our 4s aren't super amazing. Um, yeah, there's an argument for taking Rampaging Monument here, honestly. We are playing, planning to play a, a decent amount of multicolored cards, although I don't really want to tap out too often on turn 4, since we do have the Chemister's Insight to play. And we we could just win the game with Flyers instead, instead of a chonky Rampaging Monument. We're not really a curved out beatdown deck, so cards like Leaf Frog and Rampaging Monument aren't that great. So I'll take a second Night Veil Sprite, and it is a good sign that blue is opened from my right-hand side. Um, and I guess Boros is also open here. I don't mind Devious Cover-Up. Wouldn't mind Artful Takedown on the Splash 2 if I pick up a Demir Guild Gate. But uh, Devious Cover-Up plays very nice for our instant speed spells. And with two copies, we can basically ensure the late game. Being able to um, um, get back our Devious Cover-Ups from the graveyard and loop them back over and over. But yeah, I don't hate the Devious Cover-Up. Hopefully we can get two copies. But Boros does seem open for my right and the mirror. Maybe the person to my l right is drafting is it as well. Um, hopefully not, because uh, otherwise they pretty much read the signal wrong. But we'll see. And here's a Charno Troll. There's, I guess it's time for us to take a Watcher in the Mist as a win condition that we kind of need in our control deck. Otherwise, I wouldn't mind a Capture Sphere since it plays well at instant speed. But the problem with a Capture Sphere is that it just doesn't have great synergy in Is It, given that it's an enchantment and aura slash aura, and not necessarily an instant or sorcery to help fuel our beacon bolts or um, give a discount from Goblin Electromancer. So I think we take the Watcher here. Alternatively, there's also Is It Guildgate, which I would probably still take over Capture Sphere just to improve our mana base since we have double direct currents. But I'll take a Watcher, just a great 5 drop, helps us close out the late game. And yeah, if we're going to be in a controlling Izzet deck, why not a Wishcoin Crab as a decent blocker on turn 4? Um, yeah, and then we can, once we cast this and hopefully the opponent doesn't play any insane cards that can slip through the cracks, we can just essentially um, keep up our counter spells and our instant speed stuff to um, deal with the opponent. And yeah, I do like the Wishcoin Crab in this set. It's actually pretty solid given that there's um, a lot of two toughness creatures and two powered creatures in this set. Uh, Glowspur Shaman, one of the very few ways that you can get you can mill in this set. I think there's only one way to mill. I guess there's also the Lich Underrealm Lich that can mill. But uh, yeah, I'll take a Wishcoin Crab. Rubble Bell Boar could also be decent with a Night Veil Sprite, but again, I don't think we're an aggressive deck. The Wishcoin Crab makes more sense, and I'll take a second Hypothesis. Fire Urgent can be finding the aggressive is it decks too, but I've been pretty much unimpressed by it. It's definitely an upgrade over both Dock and Memor uh, Mesmerus, and I'll definitely play it over it, but um, yeah, we're taking the Hypothesis again. And another Glow Sword Shaman, so Golgari does seem open from my right-hand side. 
And um, yeah, um, I don't think we're playing a million gates. The Rubble Belt Boar, I'm not sure if I want to take it here. Um, tap, draw, whenever a gate enters the battlefield. I could speculate on the Guild Summit here. It's not like we really need the Rubble Belt Boar in this type of deck. Again, we're not like a beatdown deck, so we'll speculate on the Guild Summit in case we end up with multiple Guild Gates. This card can be a decent value engine, but we can easily um, not play it. And Radical Idea is perfect, plays well at instant speed. It, you can even jump discard two other jumpstart cards, and it can um, maybe hit us, help us hit a land drop on turn 2 in case we miss our turn 2 plays. So I do like Radical Idea a lot. And now I guess we'll take our Rebel Belt Boar on turn 5. Not sure if I'll end up playing it, because we're, again, not an aggro deck, but sometimes we just need some filler 4 drops. Not sure. Um, Barging Sergeant, not really what our deck is trying to do. So I think I'll take the Rebel Belt Boar and put it next to the Guild Gates, since I'm not sure. And um, maybe Leapfrog can make it into the deck. I wouldn't mind some, another evasive um, way to close out the game. Better and aggressive is it, but sometimes it's fine just being able to play a 3-drop and then kill something and then have this fly over and attack. Don't think, again, we're a Goblin Banneret deck. It's kind of expensive to get going, but uh, in a regular Boros deck, this can be pr quite nice since it e at 1 power, it's easy to mentor onto. So it's a decent turn one play, and again, same reason why you know I don't I'll put this on the side because we might not be aggressive enough, and it's not a great card. I don't think we're ever gonna play Locksmith just taking uncommon for the vault. And uh, yeah, I guess we still have our Rubble Belt Boar. I don't think we're a maximized velocity deck unless we open a Bean Splitter Mage. I guess we have a Rubble Belt Boar already. Um, I guess there's a chance we. Um, might pick up a Beam Splitter Mage, so I'll try to maximize Velocity, and um, yeah, we'll just pass another one. But these are kind of the maybes, but uh, these definitely seem to be able to make the cuts, but yeah, Murmuring Mystic is perfect, powerful, another alternate win condition, the excellent blocker on turn 4, could even replace the Wish Coin Crab, to be honest, but it just generates 1-1 one -one tokens, um, it's kind of like a Mythic Uncommon, so to speak, in a nice controlling Izzet or Demir deck that's looking to um, play lots of instances and sorceries, which is what we're trying to do, so this card is um, kind of perfect for what we're going for. Alternatively, I think Pack 1, Pick 1, it is pretty difficult to decide between Vraska and Murmuring Mystic. I still think it's Vraska because she's just a powerful value engine and a nice removal spell, and also a late game bomb if it goes unanswered and gets a 9 loyalty. Um, it's also splashable in the mirror, so don't sleep on this card, even though it is in the worst guild. Um, there's also Affection Indrake, a lot of great Golgari cards. If um, Murmuring Mystic was in this pack, I think I'd take an easy watch in the mist. But yeah, um, pretty difficult choice. Now Wee Dragon Knots versus Electro Stag Field. I still think it's probably Wee Dragon Knots. Like, sure, like the Electro Stag Field plays kind of nice with our controlling game plan, since it can deal little chunks of damage and we're trying to get to late game, but Wee Dragon Knots can sometimes just close games out by themselves, um, just because it can chip in a ton of damage, and, you know, we might just have enough removal and early creatures on turn 2 that we don't need to rely on the wall, whereas a Wee Dragon Knots can also block when it comes on the battlefield. Um, definitely not the best blocker, but it's pretty solid, and uh, we might need some way to kind of close out the game, um, an alternate way to close out the game once we're able to stabilize, so we Dragon Knots is great. Otherwise, I wouldn't mind a field, it would be pretty decent too. Whisper Agent, I also wouldn't mind in this type of deck. Um, how many times? I mean, we do have double Night Veil Sprite, so I could consider the Thoughtbound Phantasm. Outside of that, we're not really a Surveil deck. Um, the Thoughtbound Phantasm can be kind of fun, though, if we take it here. Alternatively, the Piston Fist Cyclops might just be the much more um, reliable ant card to take here, because, like, even if we do have Night Veil Sprite, we can draw them consistently. Um, I guess we can always ditch the Thoughtbound Phantasm. Um, but it does play very nice with um, our double Night Veil Sprite, so between these two, it is kind of close, I say. Um, yeah, given that we have a bunch of threes, I think, yeah, we'll, we'll try the Thoughtbound Phantasm. Hopefully we can pick up the, um, yeah, I guess we've found another Wee Dragon Knots, though. How many instances and sorceries? Currently five and three. I do have double Hypothesis on five already, so I can definitely value them a lot less. Maybe I just take the second Wee Dragon Knots. Uh, just to ensure that we have more flyers to help close out. Um, so I don't hate it here. 5-3. Yeah, 5-3 seems fine. Hopefully we can pick up more instances and sorceries later. And we do have a couple of fives already. Um, so I'm not sure if we need another copy. I think the second we Dragon Knots is really great. There's also Loxodon card that's great in um, Boros and 
Selesnya. Invert Invent is okay, even in a control deck, um, it's just a nice 2 for 1 on turn 6, but I don't have any lockets to help me ramp. So this is a weird deck, it's kind of like a weird, like, um, kind of like a tempo-oriented um, control deck. Um, so I think it's a Goblin Electromancer here to just give us more um, reduction to our um, instances and sorceries to cast. We do have two already, but just having two drops on Curve is nice. And again, we're not looking to Mentor, so I'll take another copy. And uh, yeah, no is it Guild Gates, unfortunately. I don't like the Mesmerist. I don't think I'll play it over any of these other two drops, so I'll take it uncommon for gems. Um, but yeah, hopefully we can get like a Guild um, something here. Um, yeah, I mean, the Muse Drake is fine, but I do have blockers already on turn 4. I don't mind the Sonic Assaults, we're not gonna, we're not really an aggressive, I mean, we do have a bit of an aggressive game plan, honestly, with these Double Wee Dragonauts and Leaf Frogs, so we could just be a mix of, like, aggro and control, so kind of like a tempo-ish type of deck. Um, so I don't actually hate the Sonic Assault, also another nice flashback spell, plays well to Murmury Mystic, so, yeah, we'll take it here. Um, we do kind of seem a little bit aggressive. And I don't think we need to leverage Evasion. The Capture Sphere, even though not an instant or sorcery, plays well with our Flash um, instant speed. And it's just a removal spell we need. Muse Trick is kind of medium. We do have Flyers already. Um, and yeah, we do have like 1-3 Flyers on turn 3. So I don't hate it. And I don't mind a second Radical idea in a deck like this. Could even ditch the Thoughtbound Phantasm now that I think about it. Just putting more instants into sorceries. Because again, we're... Ooh, Stack Field is perfect. So I might just ditch this down. Thoughtbound Phantasm now. Because again, we're not surveilling that much outside of two Night Veil Spikes and Watch and Miss. I don't want to put all my eggs in one basket with this card. And Electrostatic Field is perfect. We can just ping opponents and win that way. And even the Piston Fist Cyclops Wheel, which I think is better than Leapfrog since we do have Evasion. So yeah, I guess we don't need the Thoughtbound Phantasm synergy and can even play a third copy of Hypothesis. So this deck does look very excellent. Um, not sure if I want the Thievius cover-up in this deck, since, I mean, I know it does play well at instant speed, but honestly, um, it is not very easy to keep up, and um, we do have a lot of instances already, um, so this cut is not going to be very easy. I could even just cut a land, so it seems like we're not going to be in a control deck from what it seems. Are we just an aggro deck at this point? Maybe, and you know, the triple Electromancer seems maybe better than the Night Veil Sprite. I can see myself ditching one Night Veil Sprite since I'm not really a um, Surveil deck. I'm not really trying to trigger cards like Thoughtbound Phantasm. One, I think having one is nice just to help me Surveil, improve my draw steps, and have an extra flyer, but I definitely can see myself cutting one copy. Um, I think we want to keep our instances and sorceries. I could ditch the Capture Sphere or the Devious Cover-Up in this type of deck. Um, I could even cut a land, to be honest. Maybe I could cop cut one copy of Hypothesis, since it doesn't make us need to discard. Um, yeah, we could just be an aggressive Izzet deck, to be honest. Um, I do like the field, though. Just to ping the opponent and have a good blocker on turn two. Man, yeah, maybe I just ditch the Capture Sphere here and maybe cut a land. Not sure. I do need extra lands to discard to jumpstart. So, um, I mean, but our curve is relatively low. I could just cut a Hypothesis on maybe. And then ditch the Capture Sphere, keep the Devious Cover-Up. I mean, the Devious Cover-Up also isn't that great with our Jumpstar cards because we prefer the Jumpstar cards to stay in our graveyard. The cards I'm interested in getting back with Devious Cover-Up are probably the Hypothesis on. Um, yeah, there's just these Jumpstar cards we'd rather just have in the graveyard at the end of the day. We don't really care about shuffling the back, so I think we can ditch a Devious Cover-Up and do we just cut a Capture Sphere? Could maybe just cut a Wish Coin Crab, maybe. Like, we do have turn 2 plays already. A decent amount of removal to help us um, to help us kill things. And the Capture Sphere might just be more important. Because, like, even if we play a Wish Coin Crab to block a bunch of 2-2s, two they can easily just Luminous Bonds and remove this. Whereas the Capture Sphere can maybe guarantee us to lock something down. Um, so I don't actually hate it here. And then 17 lands I think is still fine because we do need to jump discard things to jumpstart. Um, so this can be a pretty fun deck. So looking at the sideboard, what can we consider? Definitely not any of these. Again, we're not we already have we Dragon Knots that can gain power by itself, so I don't think we need a rubble belt Boro on turn four. We're also not a Boros deck. Um, also we're looking to win through the air with Watcher, the birds from Murmuring Mystic, um, maybe a potential leapfrog. Maybe I could just Dutch ditch the leapfrog, maybe. Since the one toughness is kind of bad, 
Um, we do have triple We Dragonauts in Piston Fist, a Cyclops already. Um, Piston Fist doesn't have evasion, but it's still a pretty decent blocker on turn 3, and it can hit pretty hard if it does connect with a Sonic Assault. So maybe we just cut the Leaf Frog, maybe, over the rest of these. I mean, we could even consider Electro Stack Field if we think we can win without just pinging the opponent a couple of times. I do like the triple Goblin Electromancer with the with all everything we've got, and it's just going to do a lot of work being able to give us discounts over and over. Um, so yeah, there's an argument for just cutting the Electro Static Field, honestly, because we do have a bunch of twos already. Like, I'm, I don't mind pinging them one at a time, but honestly, maybe we can just close out by not pinging them. I mean, it's pretty bad in the late game, don't get me wrong, pretty good early on. If you can just cast a bunch of stuff to ping the opponent. There's an argument for also just cutting Leapfrog because it's still very situational. Um, so there's that cut. There's these two cuts. Um, so the cards I could consider adding back. Again, I don't think we're doing the whole surveil plan. Maybe Night Veil Sprite, Devious Cover-Up, or Wishcoin Crab, I think. I'm definitely keeping one copy of Night Veil Sprite in the deck. So let's move this one out of the way and keep this one here. Um... So yeah, these two cards are definitely cuttable. Um, yeah, and it's probably still 17 lands because we need ways to discard to jumpstart. We need resources to discard to jumpstart in this type of deck. I don't actually mind having a Devious cover up back in deck. Like, sure, we might not shuffle anything. Um, and you, I guess we can also just shuffle lands, <laughs> as weird as it seems. Um... I mean, I don't think we're gonna... I'm happy shuffling creatures back. I'm happy shuffling hypothesizals. Um, I mean... I mean, I guess the Jumpstart cards will exile themselves once you cast them second time. So yeah, maybe Divas cover up can go. I wouldn't mind a copy if I play two of them, so maybe it's not what we're looking for. And um, yeah, we do not We do have a decent amount of win conditions at three already. The Wishcoin Crab might just be, be the cut here, honestly. Um... Since it is at 4 and that's expensive and I'd rather just keep up a bunch of instances and sorceries at that point. Um, I mean, it's a pretty effective ground blocker. Maybe the Leapfrog can just go. Because, I mean, it's not like... I mean, it's it's a fine win con. But honestly, the one toughness is problematic. You can still maybe trade. <laughs> 13 creatures, so it's really between these two. I think we'll keep this field since it just has enough synergy that I don't mind having it in this type of deck. And, I mean, there's an argument for Wishcoin Crab because crab, cause it's just expensive and we don't want to tap out too much on 4. There's an argument for Leapfrog because we just have a lot of stuff at 3. Um, yeah, we're not really an aggro deck. I think we'll ditch the Leapfrog and then just try to, try to Wishcoin Crab here so we can play a nice... I mean, we're kind of a mix, almost. We do have a bit of an aggro and a um, controlling game plan in this type of deck. Sonic Assault, We Dragonauts, Piston Fist are kind of aggressive. Same with the Nightville Sprite. Um, and I guess, I mean, but we also have a control version with Watcher, Murmuring Mystic, uh, Chemisters, Capture Sphere, Triple Hypothesis in this type of deck. So, I mean, it is kind of a mix between aggro and control. Um, man, maybe we still just ditch the Wishcoin Crab, honestly. Like, we do have the Wall to Block, some 2-drops, some removal spells, and yeah, keeping up 4 mana is a lot, so maybe I don't mind the extra win condition, just have the other Leapfrog, because sometimes we might need to just have the extra Flyer to help us um, close out the game. So that, that being said, I think this is fine. Um, and yeah, I don't think we need Devious Cover-Up, because... Um, we're planning to exile our flashback spells anyways. So I don't and either way it's better not to shuffle the flashback spells so we can just recast them. So yeah, this isn't bad. We could have aggressive openers with Sonic Assault, which isn't bad. And the Leapfrog just being able to ship in for three sometimes can be kind of decent. Um so yeah, probably better than Wish Coin Crab. It's just kind of clunky and expensive. So let's try to stack out and see how it goes. It's definitely not a mid-range deck. Um, yeah, it's kind of a mix between control and aggro. I don't know if this tempo. Tempo is more like you're trying to protect a couple of creatures. Um, I mean, it's kind of a... I don't know what to name this. Someone... It's definitely not a full aggro deck. I think it's an is it tempo deck. And we're not... I mean, we have some late game finishers. Murring Mystic, maybe League Guild Mage draws cards. But we do have some early game creatures too. 
So yeah, I'll, I'll name it Is It Tempo, and then definitely favoring blue, so 9-8 seems good. Wish I picked up some Guild Gates, but yeah, with 15 red spells, we definitely need to keep 8 red sources, so yeah, I wish I had one Guild Gate to maybe cut to improve. I'm not definitely not going to play Gateway Plaza in a deck like this. I could also consider cutting one Electromancer. Hmm. That's pretty interesting, and if I cut it, what would I throw in? A Night Bell Sprite? Again, I think we're fine with one Surveil Creature. Um... A devious cover-up. Again, I don't think we're exiling. Don't think we're playing a blocker. Yeah, if I was to cut one Electromancer, I'd probably throw in a second to Night Veil Sprite. Which could also be just be okay, you know? Honestly, it's just having the extra flyer can be kind of nice. And then I guess if we don't need a second Night Veil Sprite, we could even consider throwing in a Thoughtbound Phantasm in a deck like this. Where we're just attacking and surveilling and growing this. And that can be kind of fun. Yeah, I could see myself cutting the Goblin Electromancer. Like, I know it can give us a discount, but with two already, um, I think it's fine cutting one. And our instances and so instances and sorceries are actually kind of cheap. So yeah, let's ditch one and try to try to have some fun. Throw in a second Night Veil Sprite into this deck, and I can also now see the argument of throwing the Thoughtbound Phantasm in the deck. But the question is, what would I cut? Maybe I just ditch the Leapfrog because we have a ton of stuff to do at three. We have now a ton of stuff to do at 2, including Radical Idea. The 4s are lacking, but I don't like any of these 4 drops in this type of deck. I mean, having a counter spell backup is still fine, I guess, on turn 4 to keep up. So yeah, I actually don't hate maybe just tossing in a Div Divas cover and cutting Leapfrog or putting in the Thoughtbound Phantasm in this deck. Because imagine this on turn 1, just being able to, and then you curve out with the Night Veil Sprite. Although, again, it's not guaranteed we're going to have 1 drop into 2 drop. Um, and it's not guaranteed a Night Veil Sprite will survive to grow the Thoughtbound Phantasm, so I can see the argument for not keeping this. Um, hmm. Yeah, maybe we just still take the Devious cover-up. Like, it's it does play well with our instant speed. It's a counterspell, and even if we don't shuffle anything back, it's just um, a nice instant for the deck. And yeah, with the extra Night Veil Sprite now as a flyer, we probably might not need the Leapfrog. Um, so maybe something like this seems a lo lot better. And still go 9-8. I just like having instant speed spells to cast sometimes. Just to keep up with the lead guild mage. But again, there's an argument of leapfrog. It does play with well with direct current with radical idea. There's a definitely an argument for cutting this. Maybe we can just win with Murmuring Mystic and hopefully it doesn't die, or we Dragon Knots to close out, or just the Night Veil Sprites hitting in a million times. I mean, we have double Wee Dragon Knots. Yeah, we probably have enough win cons that I can see having a Devious cover up just as a random instant or sorcery in this type of deck. Um, yeah, and we do have. These are our two drops. Um, so, one, two, three, four, five, six. So, six two drops, it seems fine. So, we probably don't need the extra uh, Goblin Electromancer in terms of our terms of our three drops i guess we only have three three drops in terms of um yeah creatures here um i guess we only have one so i guess this curve kind of makes sense um probably don't need another four drop yeah I, th I think we'll try it out hopefully this works and this makes 17 lands a lot better because if we're gonna be playing 17 lands we might as well have four mana open to get to so we can keep up the devious cover-up Bobufu. There's definitely a lot of arguments for both. Should have named the deck too. Let me exit out. Never mind. Found the game. So hopefully this pans out and we don't die to a crazy busted um, Boros aggro deck. We also need double red early for the direct currents. So double blue, double red is definitely important. Alright, so opening hand. Well, a bunch of red cards. I don't think we're keeping this. Let's mulligan. Um, this is a lot better. I can see myself ditching a land here. Um, probably still need the double red for direct current. I think that might be more important since we have more blue sources in the deck. So I think I'm keeping. And um, I mean, hopefully this doesn't come back to bite me. We do have 9 and 8. So I'm assuming we can get blue a lot more easier than red in this deck. But I could be wrong. It's all speculation, but this is fine. We can always leave the Electromancer, get a turn 3 Chemister's Insight, and go from there. So that kind of offsets our Mulligan. 
and uh, maybe the Abzan deck. Okay, drew another mountain, so I'm happy maybe discarding one to the jump start it. The chemistry's in sight next turn. I mean, the turn after. So that's a weird color combination, but at least we predicted double red. Let's move to combat, attack for two. Don't think. I guess there's also the Righteous Blow, but I, don't, I'm, I think I'm fine trading Righteous Blow here. And even if he uses it, I can still cast Chemistry's Insight at instant speed. So, a weird color combination. There's not really a Zorius or Simic in this set. So, the blue splash is pretty interesting. Maybe he's going. Yeah, there's no Azorius or Simic, so not sure what he wants to cast. I guess he wants to play a guild deck. Uh, I'll just Chemistry's Insight here because he tapped it out. So, okay, so now I have my second blue source. Happy to see that. Can easily cast the Chemistry's Insight, but um, yeah, I could just cast his end of turn for more resources. Um, alternatively, could just play out the Night Veil Sprite, and that can improve our draw steps. So I think I go for it. Should maybe kept up one single blue, but honestly, the the deck, the deck, um, the auto tapper is dumb sometimes. So whatever, I think I'm fine. There's no two mana counter spell here in this set as well. Okay, I think we're gonna attack and see what happens. I think I'm fine playing land first, and then let's move to attacks. And then having the sur surveil is nice just to. Um... So he's tapping out for that. Okay, I guess I don't mind just casting the chemisters in case I find another two drop to cast, and I'm fine discarding a land. So fine playing 17 lands in this deck. I would love to get the Surveil trigger and, um, in, and maybe bottom the land, but this is we're still in fine shape. Opponent used the Capture Sphere on, sphere on the Night Veil Sprite, so not necessarily the best. We can easily Capture Sphere the Rosemain Centaur here, but I think we just want to get the Watcher down, and then um, next turn we can deal with this. Um, Hypothesis will seems really good. Yeah, let's keep it on top. And... Again, I think I'm fine playing out the island, and we'll see. Go. Hypothesis can draw us cards, answer the Rosemain Centaur, and we can even discard the Direct Current or Goblin Electromancer. Another removal spell, probably. Okay, another Capture Sphere. So, opponents splashing for the Capture Sphere seems reasonable. I'll take four, and then a Dead Weight. Okay. So, maybe need the creature to help me close out. So yeah, I don't hate just playing the Electromancer and then casting the Hypothesis here. And then we're still going to draw two. It can discard a Direct Current and take out the Rosemain Centaur here. And I think I will keep the land just to discard to Jumpstart in case we need it next turn. We might need to double um, Direct Current, so uh, a Gates Control deck, I guess. Conclave... Um, Cavalier, but perfect for our capture sphere to answer. Let's just tap, tap this down. And I guess I'll play an island still. And uh, could use direct current as a finisher, but opponent's still at 12, so we still have a long way to go. District guy, we can maybe direct current and still get in for two. But opponent's gonna draw a card off of the gate that he fetches from Guild Summit, I presume. So hopefully I can pick up maybe a um, a wee Dragonauts to fly over and start chipping in damage. But he's going to get a bit of value off of this. Radical Idea isn't bad. I think I'll lead with a Radical Idea. And Sonic Assault also isn't bad, but I think we direct current this. Although I don't mind just rad Radicaling Ideal again just to get some value. Find this card to land. And then we can discard more lands, jumpstart, I'll deal two here. And then we can get in for two, and then we can Sonic Assault end of turn if we want to. And we still have three mana in case the Goblin Electromancer gets answered, so we'll attack in for two, Sigo. But we'll love more um, heavy hitters here, just to um, hopefully uh, end the game quickly. But the opponent with their captures just managed to deal with our, deal with our threats, the Beast Whisperer. Might want to kill that. We'll see. Quasi duplicate. That's pretty good. I guess it doesn't deal with tokens. Um, but this is going to be difficult. Maybe I'm fine still tapping one down. Maybe I just need to deal face damage to the opponent. Maybe that's just the game plan. 
Yeah, maybe it's just face damage here. And we can still keep up Devious cover-up. Um, I guess I can Sonic Assault again, attack for two. Discard Mountain. And then I can attack for two, and I guess I can still Direct Current and then keep up Devious cover-up, so that's not bad, so we'll just do it again. Hit him for two. And then next turn we can devious we can use the final direct current to deal do two to his face. So hopefully he doesn't gain any life, but we're close. Experimental friends frenzy. I guess he can play lands. Um, so I can't counter lands obviously, but I can definitely counter spells. So yeah, I don't mind it this resolving. Um, this doesn't seem like anything threatening. Luminous bonds onto the um, electromancer. I actually don't mind that. So he definitely didn't have an answer to our direct current. So opponent playing a bunch of interesting splash colors, maybe in some sort of weird control gate stack that he was trying to build. But um, yeah, we we're definitely lacking win conditions that game. So hmm. there's now an argument for Leapfrog in this circumstance because again we did seem to have some in problems closing out and dealing face damage. So maybe we just still cut the Devious cover up and just throw in the um, Leapfrog. Because yeah, from the looks of it, that matchup we just it was pretty hard to close. Um, so maybe we just throw in the extra Leapfrog and that's probably better than Devious cover up. I mean, having the counter spell is nice, but still, um, I mean, it's it was still situational. Um, we have ten instances or sorceries. Um, could actually just maybe ditch the lateral stack field. Maybe it's still too slow in a deck like this. Like fine ground blocker. Um, can deal one point of damage, which is, which is still probably slow. So maybe the static field can actually grow, go as weird as it seems, and we can still play the devious cover-ups to have the extra instant to um, just have the extra counter spell backup sometimes, which can be kind of important in my opinion. Even if we aren't planning to shuffle anything back, just having some of the instant speed stuff to play around can be nice. Um, I mean, then there's the argument for just ditching the Leapfrog, honestly, for the Electro Stack Field. But I think the Electro Stack Field might just be too slow. Honestly. Um, yeah, lots of interesting decisions. Because, like, we could close out without it, honestly. A good ground blocker, but yeah, maybe we're fine in this weird. Because we are kind of aggressive. We're not super controlling, in a sense. And um, yeah, if I'm to throw in the Electro Stack Field and cut the Devious Cover Up, then that won't be so good because I'll be lacking the extra instant or sorcery that I might need. Yeah, I mean, this is just going to sit around. It's going to ping for one. I don't think it's going to do a lot of work. Yeah, I think we cut the Electro Stack Field. Maybe in a much... Maybe in like a Niv-Mizzet deck it's better, but we're not really a Niv-Mizzet deck. We can win with face damage and maybe um, evasion overall, but pinging them one per turn might not be enough. It might be too slow. And not a bad starting hand. We'll keep... I think I might leave, leave a Nightville Sprite to get some Surveil going. But there's the argument of also just um, playing the Electromancer because it's because we only have one red. And we might as well play it in case we find another red spell and we're locked on red mana. So there's that argument. Um, I mean, we do have line, Land Force set up already, so i um, not sure what I want to do here. Kind of interesting. Um... Yeah, let's Night Veil Sprite. Let's improve our draw steps. And it also has evasion, so if he plays a ground blocker, I can still get in. Although now he just passes a turn. Alright, let's move to attacks. Don't mind keeping an extra land on top. We Dragonauts. Not bad. Um, do I need it, though? I do have Murmuring Mystic on 4 already. And the Watcher in the Mist. 
So let's say next turn we're probably going to play the Murmuring Mystic. Um, the Wee Dragon Knots is a decent win con though. <laughs> I mean, we can always just surveil for a land, land next turn as well, so. Um, uh, maybe we ditch it. Or not. Yeah, maybe we just throw it away. Maybe we just need to find more instances and sorceries to remove. To uh, trigger the Murmuring Mystic. Whereas a Wee Dragon Knots, fine win condition, but we pretty much have both of these already. Could Hypothesis all and get in for three. But I think we want to drop drop the Murmuring Mystic first, and then now I'm fine discarding extra lands. Um, a second Night Veil Sprite isn't that bad. Huh. But we might just generate enough flyers, so probably don't need a second Night Veil Sprite. So bottom two creatures. The Crackling Drake, definitely want to take that out with the Hypothesis -le. Um... And another Wee Dragon Knots, but I think we Hypothesizzle here just to gain some damage. And um, yeah, this is just a scary card, so. And can ditch another Electromancer since I'm locked on red mana. Could also see the argument for Wee Dragon Knots, but I think, I think the Wee Dragon Knots is a lot more important at this stage in the game. So now I can still. I could maybe attack first or surveil and then use Hypothesizzle at instant speed. Maybe there's an argument for that, but. Um, yeah, we'll just get in for one. And Piston Fist Cyclops is okay, but I can't really double spell, so I think I'll bottom it. And we can potentially double spell if we get a land next turn still, with the Wee Dragon Knots and the Leap Frog, so can be fine. Beam Splur Mage may be doing a pump, but we can still chump block with the Flyer, so I don't actually mind. Watcher is all, all right, but I think we just want to maybe double spell this turn. Just to be mana efficient, put out more threats. And I might just keep one of the flyers back um, to chump. Because this can be kind of scary if he has random pump tricks. So I think we attack with the Nightville Sprite. And Direct Current can answer the Beam Splitter Mage. So I think I'll keep it. And it also pumps our flyer and gives us a token. So we'll try this. And then I can still chump with the flyer and hopefully not take too much damage from next turn. Hypothesis can answer the Wee Dragon Knots. I can still block a 4 3. Okay. And I can still trade for one if I want to. Yeah, this isn't bad. I think we go for it and get in for two. Or, or I can play Watcher, but this Beam Slur Mage just can be quite scary, so I think I go for it here. And I think I'm fine just swinging with these three. And then we'll ditch the land. I mean, I don't mind discarding a jumpstart, but I'd rather find another playable instead of um, discarding a jumpstart. The frog is alright. He can cast this at instant speed to give flying, so might just want to kill it. I don't care. I guess I can still chump this, honestly. Okay. I um, mean, yeah, I can always just double block the Piston Fist Cyclops, honestly. I can still take four. Like, this is getting blocked. Um, yeah, I don't really want to take eight. I'll block. I mean, I could still double block here. I think this is fine. I just like how Piston Fist Cyclops is so good. So he'll be taking three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, I guess that's not lethal yet. I think I'll direct current away the leapfrog. Because it's just too good. And we'll just discard the other direct current. And I might as well just attack with these. And I should have enough. And I can maybe win next turn. Do I need a second mountain? I guess I don't hate it. But yeah, we'll still bottom it. I can just discard a Watcher next turn if I want to just get in for two, but this should be fine. We should be able to stabilize against this. And we're at a pretty healthy life total, so. Pulling also with a pretty interesting uh, blue red aggro tempo deck of some sort, but still, I think we just have too many. Yeah, we, just, we can just 
kill him, kill him next turn. So Beacon Bolt, make a flyer, attack for three, or just direct current. I think it's direct current to the face. And then we'll just ditch the Beacon Bolt. And we got him. So not bad. Yeah, the wall is not great. And against those Piston Fist Cyclops, it wasn't even going to block. The fact that the walls don't also, also don't have power makes it so they can keep free rolling us. So yeah, I think cutting the wall was correct. And then having the counter spell is just better in this deck. We'll keep going. And then the Phantasm might just be too slow to grow in a deck like this. So this is probably the most optimal build to go for. Um, opening hand, Nightville Sprite is always great, Radical Idea, Beacon Bolts, sure. We have all our removal spells and we can cast even the Direct Current on turn 2, so not bad. And then we can also feel the Beacon Bolts, but we'll just leave with a Nightville Sprite on turn 2. Don't see a reason to Radical Idea. And this can help improve our draw steps and ping him for 1 every turn. But Selesnia can have pretty large creatures, so do need to be careful. Um, but I think we're still attacking, and I can still direct current one copy of um, the soldier, but we'll definitely attack in case we find something good. We Dragon Knots I do like for next turn, so I think we'll keep it. And I'm fine using one direct current here on a 1-1 one -one token. Not super efficient, because it's essentially almost a 2-for-1, given that um, it's... He still gets half of his card remaining, but I still think it's fine. Just to power up our Beacon Bolt. And kind of light Vigil. Okay, um, so we definitely need to get our Direct Currents going. So, hmm. Probably still fine taking four. Next turn, what can we do? Um, I think I might want to fuel up the um, Beacon Bolt then. If that's the case, let me think here. Um, so, Direct Current. I can't Beacon Bolt and Direct Current because that's a lot of mana. So, as much as I like to play the Wee Dragon Knots, I think we might have to Radical Idea instead to fuel the Beacon Bolt. Ooh, actually Hypothesizzle is pretty nice for next turn. So, yeah, I guess I'll just attack for one. And I think I would have kept the Hypothesizzle on top. I should Surveil first, but that's fine. Sonic Assault isn't bad, too. Just as a fine defensive play. Um, and a card I can discard to Hypothesis also. I keep it on top. Going to take a bit of damage here, but I think it's still fine. And then I'm fine using Radical Idea end of turn to maybe discard a land. But as long as we can kill all the opponent's stuff, we should be fine. Obviously we can't outrace them, but I think we're fine. Hammer Dropper, I guess a Direct Current can answer that instead. Um, so yeah, some heavy hitters, um, but I think I think we'll Radical Idea. And I guess I can still tap down maybe the Candlelight Vigil, not sure. We'll discard a Mount Island because we probably need the extra Mountain in case we want to Direct Current and Sonic Assault. Hypothesis will not bad. Um, yeah, still probably going to... Direct current away the hammer dropper. And I guess we'll discard the Sonic Assault. And I guess I'll attack in for one since I'm not blocking. Watching a miss doesn't seem that bad. Um, yeah, we'll probably set up a hypothesis all anyways next turn. I would love to hit my land drops, but this is okay. I could also just beacon bolt this next turn. Okay, I guess he'll just equip, attack for 5, that's okay. Um, yeah, it's totally fine, I can still Hypothesis here, which is probably better. Yeah, we'll Hypothesis here. 
could have surveilled first, but I think I'm okay with this outcome. And I think we'll ditch the Piston Fist Cyclops. And then hopefully we can just kill all the opponent's remaining threats. I don't mind having more lands on top. Another Wee Dragonauts. Um, which I also don't hate. Do I just double Wee Dragonauts next turn? I could also just play Wee Dragonauts in the Beacon Bolt. But double can maybe help me close out the game quicker, so I think I'll keep one on top. Opponent gained a ton of life, but we managed to at least deal with his threats for now. And the opponent is out of... it's empty, so... Hopefully no insane sweepers. But we'll play double Wee Dragon Knots, which can help us close. And I think I'll keep a land on top. Yeah, the land is fine. We can discard it to maybe... A, we can still ditch the Sonic Assault. Don't hate the Watcher in the Mist. Um, I mean, I guess the Watcher can surveil too. I guess I want to surveil one first and then surveil two. I guess that makes the most sense. So we'll attack with everyone. Opponent still has nothing. Um, yeah, we'll dis discard the island. And the Watcher isn't bad. Um, I guess I'll discard both since I have lands already and I want to draw into some spells. But that was a pretty nice surveil. I mean, all three surveils were pretty nice, to be honest, just being able to discard these lands from the deck. Gatekeeper Gargoyle is a 5 5. I guess I can still Chemisters and Beacon Bolt. So that's not bad. Although I can't surveil. But that's fine. And then we can still play land into, into Beacon Bolt for 5. So yeah, I gotta keep the Beacon Bolts here. And he should be dead if, he's in too, if he can't deal with these Flyers next turn. And we'll dis discard the land, because who needs lands at this point? So not bad. Opponent with a weird Jank deck, and we managed to still deal with his stuff. A 6-6. Six, six. Okay, I guess the Beacon Bow can now um, become even more threatening. Um, so Hypothesis and Beacon Bow can work, so I don't actually hate just casting it here. And I probably don't even need to discard anything. Um, although the Leapfrog doesn't seem too useful, so we'll discard the Leapfrog. And then I can still play land into Beacon Bolt and kill this. Pullen almost ran away with the game, but we got him. So yeah, not bad. This is another game where the wall couldn't... didn't do much for us. Like, it's a fine blocker, but it wasn't going to get past a 4-3. So, yep, we'll just keep playing. Also, opponent, yeah, opponent also had Candle Light Vigil and Hammer Dropper, but he was also, we almost, we just dealt with his threats. So, that was great. And this was, this was another weird jank deck, honestly. Haven't seen any opponent, I guess, the, the second opponent, opponent we won against at least had a decent controlling is it deck. Um, the first and the third one we just won just had some weird multicolor shenanigans deck, which I don't really say it's optimal in this set, so we'll see. And we're playing against a mythic opponent, so I'm definitely um, going to respect that. Have a direct current on turn three, some radical ideas, no creatures, but I mean, it doesn't seem that bad, honestly. Um, we're on the draw. Yeah, I think it's okay. Hopefully no three toughness creatures. But I'll try this out. And a Demir deck, so... Alright. Could come back to bite me. So... We can kill the Child Knight next turn, but we'll take two... For now, and he'll gain two. Hopefully no, um... Dark Blade Agent. 
Could see a Whisper Agent end of turn if he just passes. Could see a Sinister Sabotage on my direct current, but it also it doesn't really exile, but I think I have to go for it here. And could see a Whisper Agent end of turn. Yep. And the question is, do I play out the Murmuring Mystic next turn? Might want to just to get value from the direct current. Um, or we can just discard the Radical idea. Um, yeah, I think I go for it. It's just too good. And I can still block the 3-2 and hopefully no Sinister Sabotage. Disdainful Stroke. Never mind. Okay, I guess we'll take another 3 and then hopefully we can take this out next turn. Night Veil Predator. Okay, I can't answer that. So that's going to be a problem. Might need to have find the Wee Dragonauts to answer it. But for now, I guess I can still play Night Veil Sprite. Play land, direct current away the Whisper Agent. Discarding Radical Idea. And then we need to find a Wee Dragonauts to trade for this. So it took maybe three unnecessary damage, but the Disdainful Stroke is definitely... Um, I think it was a fine time to just play it, otherwise I don't know how else, how else we are going to win, but this card is a really strong uncommon that is basically, you can't interact with this, so that's that's a problem. Can keep up Devious Cover-Up, can maybe Hypothesis and draw some cards. Um, lots of options. I think I might need to keep the land, but we'll Surveil first. Find a Wee Dragonauts to maybe trade. No Wee Dragonauts, we'll discard. And then I guess we'll be taking three, end of turn we can Hypothesis perhaps. And we don't even have to discard, we can just draw two with this Whisper Agent. Um, I guess can I can counter it. Um, I can bring back the Murmuring Mystic maybe. Or I can Hypothesis maybe draw into something, which could just be more important. Yeah, maybe we just want to draw into something. Hopefully no Disdainful Stroke. He used one copy already. Two copies is a little bit of an overkill, but could, it's still pretty efficient. Um, yeah, we'll discard the Sonic Assault. Don't think we're tapping anything, and hopefully take out this Whisper Agent. Might need to Radical Ideal for some answers. I definitely think I need the Island. But uh, yeah, Night Veil Predator is going to be a problem. Hopefully he doesn't tap out for anything big. Okay, so... Alright, Lee Guild Mage is okay. So I think we need to play out land. Um, and then I'm fine attacking to surveil and find maybe a Wee Dragonauts I can draw into. Wee Dragonauts definitely going to be our keep. Um, so the question is, if I Radical Idea and play the Wee Dragonauts... It's probably not that good. I think I can maybe cast a League Guild Mage this turn and still take three. So if I cast it, yeah, it's still not going to block or do anything. So I think I'll play the League Guild Mage and keep up Devious Cover Up instead. Next turn, maybe we can um, play Wee Dragonauts. We'll see. Probably still keep one land in hand. Yeah, let's Radical Idea here. Discarding Mountain. And I can still keep up Devious Cover Up as well, so not bad. Play land, play the Wee Dragonauts, and I can still keep up Devious and discard something to Radical Idea, so it's not bad. And I guess I'm fine attacking for one. I guess he could have removal, but we do have a counter spell for the removal, so... It's not that bad. Um, yeah, maybe we still need to keep up um, Night Veil Sprites as a chump blocker to survive, so I guess I'll get in for two. And if he flashes in something, I'm fine with the trade. And hopefully no instant speed removal. Um, yeah, that's scary. I guess I'm forced to chump. I'm definitely going to chump the Whisper Agent, so maybe I should have stayed back with a 2-2. So yeah, maybe it wasn't not in the position to attack. This is probably a really bad attack with the Lee Guild Mage. So probably force a chump. 
but we'll see go. And hopefully no removal spell at for two mana, which I highly doubt unless he has a the um, something here. But I think we'll go to blocks after he attacks, and then use the radical idea if he goes for it. But devious cover up would be fine too to enable trade of some sort. Pass while adept, pretty annoying. Hmm. I guess he can make something unblockable for three mana, so maybe I can't let that resolve. Yeah, I can't let that resolve. Bring out the Murmuring Mystic, maybe... Definitely need a Radical ID on the Graveyard. Definitely probably need a Sonic Assault. Hypothesis will can get shuffled back, I guess. And hopefully no removal spell for 4 mana. And I'm forced to chump this Whisper Agent. So, definitely a bad attack on my behalf. Since getting for 2 doesn't really accomplish much. But at least the Wee Dragon Knots can still hold back the Night Veil Predator. I mean, it definitely wasn't a good attack, honestly. A Thief of Sanity, yeah, that's going to end the game. At least I can maybe cast a Leapfrog, I guess, to potentially um, fly over and trade for the Thief of Sanity. But he, put, he can easily just top deck a removal spell at any point, and that's going to be a problem, so we'll see. And we need to do before blockers. I can always just activate the League Guild Mage. Yeah, that's GG's. Good game's opponent. Yeah, it's hard to um, beat a pretty good it, the mirror deck. The opponent's uh, Flash and Whisper Agent a couple of times, and I should have just kept the League Guild Mage back to maybe trade, and maybe I would have been in better shape, but he would have had a Artful take down the turn afterwards. And then his Thief of Sanity could have just connected even by chump block the 3-3. So I don't think I would have won that. So good job, opponent. First loss. And yeah, he'll just keep playing. That was a mythic opponent. So hopefully we don't come across too many of those. We have a pretty good rank at 77. So great rank. I think I played this guy like a million times already in draft. I forgot, you know, what he usually does. But not a bad opening hand. I think this is a keep. And then hopefully we can curve out 2-drop into 3-drop. And um, that would be kind of nice. Hopefully no Burglar Rat. I guess if Burglar Rat happens, I'll just discard a Chemist's Insight. Uh, but yeah, we'll play a Goblin Electromancer. And then hopefully I can get the Wee Dragonauts out to start pressuring the opponent. Dark Blade Agent, kind of scary. Hmm. Am I fine if this connects? I actually don't mind if it connects and draws him a card. We can always deal with it next turn. So yeah, we'll just play out the Wee Dragon Knots and say go. And if he wants to attack, I'm fine letting it happen. He can waste a Surveil card. He still it replace it turns all his Surveil cards into cantrips, but that's okay. I don't think I'm in a position to block here. Muse Drake, okay. Fine card, but um. Okay, we could just cast uh, Leapfrog, although it's not very mana efficient. I guess I don't mind playing land and then just, just casting Hypothesis here, taking out the Dark Blade Agent. Um, the Direct Current doesn't seem good since there's not a lot of two toughness, so I think we'll cut that. And then we'll deal, take out the Dark Blade Agent and attack for three. And he's probably not chumping. And then we can maybe tempo him out with the Sonic Assault District Guide. I guess that's a good answer for my Direct Current, so I could just use that next turn to take this out. He is playing a bunch of Guild Gates, so I should be careful. Sprouting Renewal, just to convoke a 2-2. I mean, that's not bad. Um, do I just kill this and get in for 5? I think I do. I mean, this is not bad, and we still have land 5 up. So yeah, I think we go for it. We just take out this 2-2. And I think we discard another island here. Since we might need triple red. More often than not. And we still get in a ton of damage. I mean, I could also just Chemister's Insight here. The Leapfrog does add more, like, damage to the board. So I guess I'll just do that instead. And then next turn we can still Chemisters and Sonic Assault in the same turn. So Goblin Electromancer doing a lot of work and the opponent is on the back foot. So 
Um, he could have a sweeper here. That can be pretty annoying. Hopefully, no. Um, that's going to take three mana to equip, which is not the easiest. I can tap it down and attack in the air. So, opponent's probably going to stay back on defense here because it's not really good attacking. I don't know why you would splash for this card. It's very medium. And I don't know why you're attacking. That's also not what I would recommend. Because you might need this 2-2 to block, but I guess a Playcrafter. Um, so if I kill the Goblin Electromancer, I won't be able to double spell next turn. So I think the Leapfrog goes. And um, yeah, I don't mind just casting a Sonic Assault on the Muse Drake. So opponent's at 10. If I use it again, um, this 5, 6, 7, it's going to be very close. Um, I can get him down to 5. If I Sonic Assault again, that's going to put him down to 1. So maybe I go for it. And then I guess I can still discard the land. Yeah, then he's definitely forced to stay back next turn. And then a single direct current can basically win me the game. So opponent is at 1, so... He's forced to stay back. He can maybe surveil one to gain one life, but that's still very, very sketchy for, for him to do so. So he would need a removal spell on my Wee Dragon Knots to get in for three or six and try to race me, but mission briefing, getting back, sprouting renewal. I still don't think it's great. I guess he's trying to find a removal spell here. Yeah, I'm not sure if you want to convoke this out. You can attack for three, I guess. Um, yeah, that's a pretty risky attack. Um, I guess I'll watch her here and hopefully he doesn't have a removal spell. But I'm fine discarding a radical idea is quite good. Just being able to pump, but I might not need it. Yeah, we might not need it. Let's discard it. And then I could just play out land. Now yeah, we'll say go. City Watch Sphinx. So I need an answer to that as well. Um, let's chemisters. And then nothing. Okay. Um, guess I can still play land. Play Night Veil Sprite. Radical idea. End of turn. Yeah, I think we say go. I'm not in the mood to attack. We can always double block the Muse Drake. Opponent just plays a land, so he needs a pretty good top deck or a final card. I guess he'll just switch to the face. Say, watch, watch things. I guess he's just going to switch it around. I'm happy taking seven. I think I can. I think this is a bit of a risky attack because um, I do have um, three legal attackers, so he would probably need to play another. I guess this has this has vigilance, so. Never mind, okay. Yeah, let's radical idea here. I think we need to discard the land. Maybe find a direct current off the top. And there it is. Not bad. And we can also hypothesis, but we'll get in for two here and not waste too much time. But not a bad soul tie control deck from the opponent. Keep playing. And just having creatures attacking in is probably better than just pinging them for one, since, like, even if the Goblin Electromancer is played on two and the opponent misses a land drop, we can just hit attack and he gets in for two, so. I do like the wall, but it's probably better in, like, a more late game oriented deck where ours is kind of like middle, middle of the road, kind of aggressive and kind of aggressive, more aggressive in the early game. Nightwell Sprite is great, and then we Dragonauts. Hopefully I can dig up a land to get a Murmuring Mystic online. So, not a bad opening hand. Ooh, well, the Electromancer is great, but I might need to play the Nightwell Sprite first. That's a... Cr We're definitely not blocking that. Yeah, the Nightwell Sprite probably needs to come online just to... I mean, I guess if I play Electromancer, if I get... Nah, I guess I can't direct current. 
either way, unless I get my second red source. So I think having to surveil is more important. And, and well, Tajik, okay. Well, that's no joke. I guess we'll have to um, hopefully top deck a second red source. And we did, so not bad. Definitely gonna take out Tajik. And then we'll try to surveil for land, take three. And land is good. We can play out the Murray Mystic next turn. True Fire Captain, well, yeah, that's gonna be a problem. Uh, so two four fours. I might have to double block this True Fire Captain, or yeah, I might have to, or just chump it with the Murmuring Mystic. And take one. Yeah, this is not going to be easy. Um, yeah, this is not going to be easy. I mean, if I play the go I guess I can play the Goblin Electromancer and Chump. And then next turn, Hypothesis away the 3 3. But yeah, I think it's Murmuring Mystic here. And I might have to keep this 1 3 back to block in case he has a Luminous Bonds because I can't afford to take all this damage. Our healing patrol quite strong. Okay, so we're definitely gonna chomp the first striker here and hopefully no nothing too crazy. No righteous blow, but he probably has one. Wow, this opponent has everything. Yeah, we're not gonna have an easy time. This is uh, pretty much game over. I can hypothesis here, taking out the Sun Home Stalwart, but he then then he can just mentor into the two three. I guess I can still Wii Dragon Knots, but I don't have any instances. Yeah, this is just game over. It's a pretty insane start. So that's why Boros is so strong in this set. You can just literally curve out with two uncommons and just win that way. Maybe if I made a bird token, that would have um, maybe allowed me to triple block the um, True Fire Mentor and take that out. Yeah, if the Murmuring Mystic survived, maybe I would have still stabilized, but... Uh, I was still at a pretty precarious life total, so definitely wasn't an easy match. That match just ended, like, on turn 4. Turn 5, I mean. So it kind of shows you the power of Boros in this set. And, um, yeah, this hand is alright. I guess if I turn 4, Murmuring Mystic, I'm alright, and I just hope I don't die. Is that reasonable, or do I mulligan? I think we mulligan. This hand is a little bit better. I think I can keep. I think I maybe can just ditch the leap, the leap frog here. I do want the removal spells and the radical idea. Radical idea can fuel the beacon bolts, and also pretty nice with the wee dragon knots. So I think we'll try something like this. And second red source for a turn three direct current is also not bad. Another boros deck. Okay. But at least there's it's not Sun Home Stalwart, and at least we can answer it next turn with a direct current, so quite happy. I'm hoping he plays a two um, toughness creature for me to kill, then I can beacon bolt the turn afterwards. Like the shield mate, yeah, I don't actually hate just taking it out here. Um, and that can fuel my beacon bolts. Alternatively, I could just play the Wee Dragon Knots and get a little bit more greedy, but I don't think I'm gonna be hyper aggressive against um a Boros stack, and I'll decide whether or not I want a Radical Idea end of turn. Well, I do like Direct Current against the Boros stacks. It's still 3 mana, so if you miss a land drop, you can die to like a turn 2 Sundom Stalwark or Healer's Hawk um, with a Mentor trigger on it, but um, still pretty solid. Not the best, but solid. I'm happy with this Maniacal Rage. Hmm. Okay, I guess um, we just need to put a Radical Idea. I guess it's going to require a lot more work. I like how these Boros players kind of go all in. Mm. Alright, I guess we can Chemister still, and... Um, I mean, I can't take this out, so that's a problem. So I probably need to still Chemisters here. And I think I need to Jumpstart card in the Graveyard, so I guess I'll be taking another 4. Could also chump block, but I think we might just need to keep this 2-2. And uh, hopefully I don't take too much damage in the meantime. He is missing his land drops, so I'm just trying to hope I can beacon bolt this maniacal raged fresh face recruit in order to win next turn. 
Gotta remember, this doesn't count cards in exile. Does it? Not sure. I need to, this stupid um, name tag is blocking it, so probably need to reread it next turn. All right, Mrs. Landrop. So yeah, um, it actually counts as exile too. So yeah, I guess I'm wrong, but at least this is dead now, and we can easily just steal the game by using a bunch of removal spells and taking out his creatures here. I I'm at 10 life, so I'm good. Unless he plays like a giant haste creature, which I highly doubt it. So Night Veil Sprite is quite good. I guess I can also Radical Idea or Chemist's Insight here. This Radical Idea. We also have Hypothesis all up. So yeah, I guess Beacon Boat still retains its... Um, Stats, so I could have radical idea at the end of turn, but it's not as fun if I have a wee, unless I have a wee dragon knots on the battlefield. So, yep, kind of have to just make sure the Boros aggro deck doesn't have a lot of misses or land drops, so you can just steal games with it. But at least we might just end up five and two, which I'm still fine with. Sky Knight Legionnaire probably chip in for two, which probably won't do anything. And we can just direct current it. Can still discard the land. Can keep up hypothesis all end of turn. I like 3, 4, 5, 6. I guess I can just cast it. And I don't even have to discard anything. And get in for lethal. Diva's cover up is always great. And that's good games. Sometimes the Boros deck gets you, and sometimes you get the Boros deck. And yeah, we just need two more wins to get the seven, and we still made back some gems, so I'm quite happy with the result. Let's keep playing this. And I think I drafted this deck very well, so even if we don't get the 7, it kind of shows you the power level of this set, and not bad. I would love a double red, but Piston Fist Cyclops on 3 is fine, plus Murring Mystic. I think I'll try it. And we're also on the play, so it kind of gives us an advantage against the Boros decks, which are out to run us over. And Capture Sphere on 4 also isn't too bad. Might not trigger anything, but still kills something, kind of, I guess. Can lock down an opposing flyer, a large creature. Hopefully not in our Boros deck. Because if we can resolve Murmuring Mystic and have it survive, we can win the game that way. And with three lands, I think this is reasonable. I'm going to play on Mountain, because I could have top deck another Mountain next turn. And hopefully I get another land. Just need land four, honestly. Another Selesnya deck, so we should be okay. Night Veil Sprite. Mm, I think I still play, play the Piss and Fist Cyclops to be mana efficient. And hopefully I can uh, find a land next turn to get down the Murmuring Mystic and win that way. So, Splashing Red, so could have some pretty um, good cards. I think I'm fine blocking if he attacks. Skyline Scout, pretty annoying too. And land isn't bad, so now I can drop the Murmuring Mystic and start using maybe some instances of sorceries to um, close out. By making a bunch of 1-1s, blocking the 2-1s and taking these out. But I do need double red, so... 
the Murmuring Mystic on turn 4 is definitely scary, especially in a, especially since Luminous Bonds can't answer the passive ability, and you need 5 damage, which is not easy to do in um, this set. There's, I guess there's, um, he could splash for a commanding, Command the Storm, but um, that's a high-picked common that's usually picked up pretty around, like, pick 3, pack 1, pick 3 usually, so... Not the easiest. Might have to kill the Defcar and Dissident next turn. Like, it still can't attack past the Murmuring Mystic, but still pretty annoying. That's a card I don't mind using Capture Sphere on, though. Um, or I can develop the board. I mean, I can still trade for it, so I honestly don't mind just developing the board so I can maybe try to find a land next turn. Yeah, sure. I think I'm fine trading the Piston Fist Cyclops for the 4-4. It seems pretty reasonable. And we can save the Capture Sphere for maybe a large creature like Siege Worm that we can't really block too well. And if he wants to use a removal spell, that's fine with me. Hopefully no Command of Storm on my Murmuring Mystic. Tajik, so splashing for Tajik. Um, we can still kill some of his stuff. I guess he can fly his Skyline Scout over, over. I can still trade off for Tajik. I guess he can keep up his first strike ability, but I can still maybe double block it. Which I don't actually hate. Okay, Gert for battle. That's not good. Alright, so opponent is going all in, so... We just need to make some pretty good blocks here. Single green, he could have my the masses here, so I should be kind of careful with my block decisions. Tajik definitely needs to go, so... Okay, let's see. Um, I could take five. So, pretty interesting blocking decisions. Um, I, I do have a Capture Sphere to answer the Rosemane Centaur, so I could still take five. Um, yeah, so I think the blocks are going to be something like this. So, and then we're going to block Tajik here. This seems to make sense. Since, I mean, I can block here, but I don't want to put the Murmuring Mystic to Harvest Way, so I think this is fine. And hopefully no Might of the Masses, otherwise that's going to be a problem. I mean, I guess if he uses Might on this, it's... Yeah, he had it, but he's using on Tajik, sure. Um, could use Capture Sphere next turn. And say go. Yeah, and I can use the 1-5 to block, which I'm fine with. Even though it's like a win con that can make flyers, I think I might need to use it in case he does something main phase, like enchant the Tajik. And I'm definitely blocking here so I don't take a million damage. And hopefully, no stupid pump tricks. Crawl Harpooner, okay, can deal with flyers. So I think I can, I guess I can't take it out. Mm, that's annoying. But land is good. Um, so, yeah, it prevents all non combat damage. So I probably need to play the Watcher here and find an answer to Tajik. And Chemist's Insight is quite good, although it's not going to. Um, find an answer to Tajik. I could just ditch it, maybe. In hopes I can get, like, a Hypothesis off the top. Or I can still flashback it, so I guess I don't hate this. He can still attack a Mentor, which is problematic. Yeah, this is still problematic. Maybe I still just go for the trade on the Carl Harpooner. It's not great, but I honestly don't want to take a million damage. I mean, I can still take four. Maybe taking four isn't still bad. Yeah, taking four still isn't too bad here, so I think this is fine. And we can still keep the Watcher in case we need something. Trample doesn't do anything, so I just need to find an answer to Tajik. He can activate some stuff, end of turn. Yeah, this isn't going according to plan. Maybe I just need to... This card is so annoying. Um, probably just need a Chemist's Insight main phase.
And then maybe still cast the Night Vale Sprites. Not sure. I can still make a Chump Blocker at least. I guess that's not too bad. Okay, it's not that great. I might need to play out my Dwee Dragonauts keep up Radical Idea next turn. Um, so I guess I can still Chump and keep this back to block the Conclave Guild Mage. He can keep making tokens, but I think we should still be okay. Hopefully no removal spell. Prey Upon would actually kill this for free because it's non-combat damage. So I just need to take out Tajik and then Conclave Guild Mage, and I think I have the game covered, but it's not going to be easy. I could just go for the trade now. But I still need a good blocker on this Conclave Guild Mage, so I guess I'm chumping. Opponent can make two twos all day. So just need to kill Tajik and then Conclave, Conclave Guild Mage and we're fine. Um, so I can just play out Wee Dragon Knots here and then keep up Radical Idea. It's fine playing out the land and I think we're going to say... I think we're fine attacking for three since I don't mind trading off for the Wee Dragon Knots. Or maybe just still need to keep the 3-4 back to block. So yeah, I'm probably not in the mood to attack so we'll just cast the Wee Dragon Knots. I guess the Tajik will still have first strike, but we can still double block it, hopefully. Um, and I can still block the Crawl Harpooner. So I think that's my only way out. I'm hoping he didn't top deck any other removal spells, so... Yeah, I think we need to do this. And have him activate Tajik, and then we'll Radical Idea. And hopefully no second removal spell at instant speed, since this can be a complete blowout. I mean, I do need to, again, find maybe a hypothesis to answer this. But yeah. Okay. Trading for Tajik, that's not bad. So all I need to do is now take out the Conclave Guild Mage, and I should be, de and I should be in good shape. And he just passes. Okay, I'll keep the Radical Idea to maybe discard. Hypothesis wasn't bad. I think I need to direct current this. Otherwise, it's just going to get out of hand. And then we can ditch the Radical Idea instead. And probably still going to keep the 1-3 back to block. I can I might just keep up radical idea just to make another bird token to maybe trade so I think we'll say go the night vale sprite at this point might just be too slow but the opponent had a pretty explosive start with the Tajik on turn three which almost stole him this game but yeah at least we're stabilizing so um, yeah, before blocks, I think we're going to Radical Idea. Discard, um, yeah, I think I need the other Wee Dragon Knots. The Night Vale Sprite can go at this point. And then our blocks are going to be something like this. This prevents the most damage. Hopefully no one way to deal one damage to all. Skyline Scout I can still take out. So yeah, I think we got this. Um, so I'm definitely going to keep up. I, I guess I guess I don't mind just the main phase hypothesis on attack here. So that's pretty good. And uh, yeah, we'll discard the Radical Idea. Since we can always discard a land to get value. Take out the Crawl Harpooner, which is a problematic card and then we can I think I'm fine getting for three this turn I can even make a bird at instant speed if I want to to block the skyline scout so I think the opponent might have thrown this game away with that uh, Tajik attack he should have been careful maybe hoping hoping he can find another pump spell off the top but now we have multiple we dragon nuts and yeah we got him so sweet six and two 
Um, and off to the final boss, hopefully not another crazy Boros deck. This one was a weird uh, Naya colored um, deck, which definitely seemed to have some decent splashes, and he kind of got really lucky with the Tajik on turn 3, but um, yeah, it could have went wrong bad poorly if the opponent had a pump spell to keep up, but yeah, let's, um, let's uh, go to the final boss and um, try to... Um, upload this into my channel and even if I don't get seven I think this is still worthy of an upload I think it's a very solid um, draft overall and uh, can definitely help some of you um, understand a set in the future and help you guys improve your choices and decision making because um, that's what my content is here to do Okay, haven't played this guy yet, so hopefully this is a very surpri nice surprise. And a turn two, Night Veil Sprite. Can Sonic Assault to put something in the graveyard? I guess Night Veil Sprite can also just discard a Jumpstart card to Beacon Bolt, so I don't actually hate this, especially on the play. We have double red for direct current on turn three if it gets that way, so I think this is a fine keep. You need double blue and double red, of course. The worst card in our hands, probably the devious cover up, and hopefully I could I wish I could replace this with something else, but like a direct current would probably be better just to fuel the beacon bolt, but this is a good opening hand. On the play, also a lot better against the Boros deck. And this is the final boss, gotta greet him. And another weird Selesnya deck, okay, not bad. Hopefully I can surveil for land next turn. So we can keep up Devious Cover-Up and Chemister's Insight. Crawl Harpooner, who taking out our um, Night Veil Sprite, so that's a pretty nice um, play. I think I'll have to Sonic Assault this end of turn to put something in my graveyard and prevent three. So yeah, not a good start for me and hopefully I can find a land to fuel our beacon bolt to take out this crawl, crawl harpooner eventually but I, I guess yeah I want I definitely want this to resolve goes on to the crawl harpooner but we'll shut it down for time being buy ourselves some time leapfrog can maybe trade I think I'll have to play the leapfrog here don't really want to but I think I need to kind of disincentivize an attack here And hopefully I can get my fifth land going, but I'm definitely going to trade for the Crawl Harpooner. It's definitely something I have to do. And find forcing a pump spell so he taps out for the turn. Yeah, he's probably going to use the Pax Favor, so at least got rid of that. But can definitely be problematic. Okay, um, probably need to Sonic Assault and take out the Crawl Harpooner, or maybe need to dig towards the land. I can Beacon Bolt for one, but I think I need to dig for a land and hopefully take out this Crawl Harpooner. Uh, and land is good, so now we can play land and then... Um, can also Radical Idea end of turn for the extra land. Um, so we'll say go, take five, and hopefully we can take out this Crawl Harpooner. Maybe just ditch the Devious cover up at this point, because we just need to tap out for our stuff. So yeah, unfortunately going to take five. Yeah, probably the Devious cover has to go. Generous Stray, I'm not too scared of. Yeah, let's ditch the Devious cover up. Um, the tone of instant sorcery own in exile, so yeah, it's only it's only showing it's one it's one because it hasn't been put into exile yet. But I definitely need to do this just to um, get my land drop, and that's not bad. So land is good, and I guess I can now hypothesis here, or beacon bolt. I guess hypothesis is a more mana efficient play, so we'll try that. And, um, yeah, I guess we'll ditch the Chemister's Insight. Yeah, because we can always double spell next turn. I want to have the Weed Dragon Knots to have a creature at least. Take out the Crawl Harpooner before it murders us. And hopefully nothing large he can convoke. 
a Rosemane Centaur would be pretty annoying, but he is attacking, so probably no Convoke, probably a large, maybe, hopefully no large creatures. Could be holding a Rhizome Lurcher in his deck. So, not sure. Underrealm Lich, I guess we might have to just keep tapped, because that's a powerful card, so... Yeah, probably need to cast the Wee Dragonauts and... And just tap it. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to use Beacon Bolt. I can't exile this, so... Opponents get, got, gets to have to tr have the trigger. Maybe I can keep shooting it to make him lose life. And then pre-combat, we'll tap it down with Sonic Assault. So it doesn't deal a million damage to us. Luminous Bonds. Okay, pretty annoying. I can still tap this. I'll, I'll take two, and I can still tap down the Underrealm Lich, but yeah, not a bad final boss, honestly. I, this opponent is uh, very is prevent providing me a good challenge in the meantime. Need a good blocker, hopefully a Murmuring Mystic off the top. Ledef Champion has to go. I can't allow that to stay. Uh, yeah, I hate to say, but... Um, yeah, he can just attack and tap any number of creatures, so this this card definitely has to go. It's too scary. And then I don't think I'm going to be using the Chemistry's Insight to end of turn. Um, so I guess I'll keep the land. I could still use on the Underrealm Lich and make him pay for, but... Yeah, I think we'll say go. And take six. But yeah, this is still a really good deck, so I mean, sometimes you just face against good opponents with great cards on curve. The Crawl Harpooner taking out my um, Night Vile Sprite on 2 was very backbreaking, and that could have maybe helped me get my land earlier. But yeah, opponents uh, with some very good cards need to find my... I mean, maybe I should have played land to discard the Watcher in the Mist. That's another potential card that is hard to deal with, so yeah, maybe I should just done that. Maybe I just do trade for the Underrealm Lich. I guess I'm dead. So, if I was to play land and discard a Watcher, yeah, I would have gotten the Murmuring Mystic, so I definitely messed up that game, this game. I should have played the land and discarded the Watcher since the, the um, Murmuring, Mystic, Murmuring Mystic was my only way to deal with this Underrealm Lich, and... Um, and um, block it and make 1-1s one to stabilize, so definitely um, wrong choice. But I guess he had a Flower Flourish anyways, but either way, like I guess I could have still made a Chump Blocker and block something, but still would have taken too much damage, so good game's opponent. And uh, yep, no blocks. And yeah, not a bad showcase of um, a... It was an is it deck that was meant to be controlling, but we just picked up too many Wee Dragonauts. So it was a weird mix of aggro and control. Like it's an aggressive, mostly an aggressive deck with a bit of a controlling component. So I think tempo is what um, fits the name. Usually when aggro and control are mixed, we kind of call that mid range. But this is not really a tap out deck where you have um, powerful drops every single turn. It's more like it's trying to keep up instances and other spells. So yeah, not not a bad deck. Quite happy with um, where we got to six and three. Let's claim our prize. Should have maybe went through the deck before I closed out, but yeah, we'll crack some packs, pretend we're drafting some Ravnica Legions, and maybe I'll make one more video and hopefully get seven. But yeah, let's pretend we're drafting Guilds of Ravnica. Pack one, pick one. Um, Murmuring Mystic, obviously, keeps us flexible, powerful win condition. Um, and uh, yeah, I messed up that one game, maybe should have played it out. I mean, there was chance he didn't have removal or flower and flourish, and we could have just stabilized with the Murmuring Mystic. Always play to your outs and always make the best ch chances. Um, Blade Instructor is an overperformer. I do love in the Boros Aggro decks, and even in Selesnia, it does mentor onto something. The three power means that it can mentor in, onto a Parhelion Patrol or a potential, you know, um, Sun Home Stalwart on turn two or Boros Challenger. So, this is a card that I do like that does overperform. Swarm Gill Mage, decent in. Um, Gari deck can gain you a bit of life to help stabilize in the late game, and then you, if you need to give your large creatures menace to make them difficult to block, the 5 man activate ability is nice. But again, not a big fan of Gogari unless you open up um, a bomb like Underrealm Lich like our previous opponents, um, where you can self-mill and put creatures onto your graveyard. There's Surveil in this set, but honestly, it's 
it's you still need to play their surveil card first, so it's a lot of mana to get going. Um, so yeah, I'm not a big fan of Golgari and Green in general, but Murmuring Mystic is the pack one, pick one. Kind of like a Mythic Uncommon if you can build around it. Um, Night Veil Predator has to be take o pick over the Artful Takedown and Direct Current. Artful Takedown, you can easily splash it, of course, in Golgari or in Izzet. But the Night Veil Predator is almost kind of like a Mythic Uncommon too. If you can cast this down, it's basically impossible to interact with unless the opponent has some sort of, uh, has fine finality or some enough flyers to block this, but if you're going to be playing in a Demir deck, you should have enough Artful Takedowns, Deadly Visits, and Price of Fames, and even Dead Waste to take out the opponent's opposing flyers, and then after this goes uncontested, it can just uh, win the game by itself. So Night Veil Predator is definitely over Artful Takedown. Also kind of like a Mythic Uncommon, but it's not unbeatable. You can definitely put flyers and blockers against it, but definitely a huge nuisance, especially in the mirror with lots of removal and interaction, and even, even bounce spells can be pretty backbreaking against this, but yeah, I think I would take the Night Veil Predator, and between these two, probably still Artful Takedown over Direct Current, since Direct Current isn't the easiest to cast, and sometimes three toughness blanks, sometimes, this can't answer three toughness, better often it is a deck, but I still don't mind one copy of this in Boros, I wouldn't play two copies, since Boros is more like a curve out creature deck, just which wants to cast things consistently. Whereas, you know, this, the double red, can be problematic, and it's more of a defensive type of card. So yeah, uh, Direct Current is good, don't get me wrong. It did help us win a couple of games in our uh, Is It Tempo deck, but I still think um, I would take Artful Takedown, since, you know, it still deals for damage at 4 mana at instant speed and tap something down. So very nice defensive and offensive card, very flexible, but still take Night Veil Predator. Price of Fame, easy, since it's flexible. Conclave Guildmage, pretty good win condition in the late game, like our last opponent. You can just constantly activate this. But it's still making two twos. They can still get blocked. You still commit yourself into two colors. And again, the green guilds are definitely the worst in this set. But Price of Fame can lead you up to Golgari, Splashable and Izzet, and also Great and Demir. And uh, yeah, the Surveil 2 is really nice. Instant speed, four mana, definitely uh, nothing to scoff at. So Price of Fame is great. Uh, this pack sucks, probably the Watcher in the Mist, since you can play this in Izzet or Demir, but just a 5-mana 3-4 is a decent win con, and um, can also Surveil 2, which improves your draw steps, so big fan of Watcher in the Mist. This is not a set where you want to ramp, so Circuit this route isn't great. Also, since Celesnia can just Convoke out their big creatures, you don't need a million lands, you just want to play a million creatures and Convoke them out, instead of playing a card like Circuit this route. Um, and yeah, there's just not a lot of expensive stuff to ramp into. Um, as I and as I say that, there is a Molder Hulk in this pack, which is still all right. But even in an undergrowth deck, this is still pretty hard to get down since it costs a lot. Usually speaking, the Rhizome Lurchers are just a lot better since you can get them down a lot earlier. And um, as long as as the Rhizome Lurcher is like a five-five or four-four, it still can be much more um, efficient than the Molder Hulk. But yeah, um, not just not too much expensive stuff, stuff to ramp into in this set. Unless you open up like a Hatchery Spider, but even then that card is okay. And yeah, given that there's a lot of Luminous Bonds, Price of Fames, and Bounce Spells, and Capture Spheres in this set, even if you manage to get out your Boulder Hulk, you can easily get uh, answered. And uh, that's kind of backbreaking since you're tapping out for a whole entire turn just to have this get removed by like a three, ma a three or four mana removal spell. So yeah, not again, not a big fan of these expensive Curve Toppers in this set. But uh, Watcher is definitely great and probably the pick here. Uh, City Watch Sphinx, um, I do like this card, um, it's a decent curve topper, and again, it does fit into the, um, is it or, um, the mirror controlling game plan, where you need to kind of have a late game finisher. That being said, it is very pricey, I would still take maybe Watcher in the Mist over City Watch Sphinx, since, uh, Watcher is one, costs one less, and it surveils right away, um, whereas the City Watch Sphinx, um, has to die in order to surveil too. There's also Luminous Bonds and Capture Sphere that can answer it. But I guess it has a decent death trigger, it surveils too, but 6 mana can be quite pricey. Usually, um, I mean, this does hit pretty hard if it manages to connect, don't get me wrong, but 6 mana is a lot, and you can easily get run over by Boros Aggro in this set. Whereas, if you just cast a Watcher sometimes on turn 5, it can be, it's definitely can just block and hold off a decent amount of creatures and still, um, Surveil to immediately. So out between this and um, maybe 
Watch to miss. I'd still take Watch to miss. Between this and maybe Artful Takedown, I'd probably still take Artful Takedown over City Watch Sphinx. It's just too clunky and expensive. Definitely pretty solid, and I wouldn't mind playing it in a controlling deck where I can stabilize the early game and have this uh, beat down the late game, but um, still pricey. Um, but yeah, I would still probably maybe take Direct Current over City Watch Sphinx since the dream, since um, I talked about this card already, and it's quite good. Again, not the easiest to cast, but so is the City Watch Sphinx. At least you can curve this out in turn 3, and they can deal with those annoying 2-2s two in Boros. Um, whereas the City Watch Sphinx isn't, doesn't have too much of an immediate impact. The 4 Toughness doesn't really block too well in the late game. And um, yeah, it doesn't surveil immediately. So a little bit down on the City Watch Sphinx, but definitely a playable card. So there you have it. A nice 6-3 um, and three video. Should have um, talked about this deck. Maybe I can go into my deck list and talk about the deck before we... Um, end the video and I did make two copies this this deck was very strong with Niv Mizzet and um, also let me show it to you guys um, this deck also went to like five and three but I don't think I want to talk about this deck I opened up Philip but was a bit of a train wreck since I end up splashing red and I got killed by a bunch of other decks okay so this is the deck for the draft but it's it was really solid it was another is it control deck with um lee guild mage electrostatic field um couple radical ideas even the wall of mist and i still didn't do too well since the bros aggro decks ran us over still didn't even have time to cast niv mizzet sometimes i think it went um Pack one, pick one was Dream Eater. This was pack two, pick one. It still, I did, still didn't perform well, even with a lot of counter spells and uh, removal spells. So it kind of shows you how um, you can just die to Boros Aggro in this set, even with a very um, well-rounded deck that you spent a line, lot of time um, building and working on. But this deck it wasn't bad. Went six and three, and um, yeah, it was very solid. Um, it was meant to be a control deck with a pack one pick one lead guild mage and two chemisters insight. But again, just we were just past a bunch of um, a couple of aggressive cards, and uh, our curve was quite low. And I was still happy going 17 lands. We still managed to draw a bunch of cards, managed to cast most of our spells, and um, we need the extra lands to discard anyway. Two cards like radical idea and um, direct current and um, beacon bolt. So. Yeah, here it is, a bunch of decent two drops. Radical Idra can cantrip. Cantrip can enable um, Piston Fists. We and our double Wee Dragon Knots as win conditions. Same with the Murmuring Mystic. A decent amount of threes. Um, direct, direct currents and beacon bolts to as removal spells. The Sonic Assault maybe like a temporary tap spell, but still an instant or sorcery that I was happy to um, have in the deck to maybe buy us some time, get in a huge attack, or feel our other spells. And um, yeah. Not bad, triple hypothesis -ome. even with triple, it was still pretty solid in the deck as a removal spell and a decent card draw. So, yeah, um, not a bad deck, and uh, hopefully I'll probably throw in another um, Guilds around the draft because it's about to end in less than a day. So, yeah, stay tuned for more content, and hope you guys have a great day, and uh, take care.